So, Otto, you have an issue with Michael McCarthy saying the Cowboys will win Sunday. Big Mouth McCarthy. Oh, why you got to start off with Big? I'm going to tell Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, yeah, get him. Get him. Big shaming. Mouth Fat McCarthy. McCarthy. You called him Big. Of course I got an issue with it. Okay, let's go. Um, okay, of course right. I got an issue with okay. it, man. Well, here's what I hate. I, honestly, I don't think I hate anything more in life than this. Me? When someone writes a check. Oh. That somebody else has to cash. Oh, okay, okay. Mike McCarthy, of course we're going to win this game. Mike mm. McCarthy just wrote a check. Yes, he did. With a big, big lump sum. Winning this game, beating a Washington team this red hot. Beating a Washington team that's won four straight. Ooh. Cowboys have lost three out of five. So Mike McCarthy just wrote mm. a huge check. Big boy. That now all these Cowboys players have to go out there and cash. They don't have a choice. Mm. He said, of course, we're going to win this game. He said they're going to win this game. So, you know, I know, coaches know, don't make declarative statements when you cannot actually guarantee what's going to occur. Don't do that. You know that. Don't do that. McCarthy, first and foremost, you just got back after your absence from COVID. After taking a step back, you should be able to realize this Cowboys team is not where they were before the bye week. Mm. So, McCarthy, you of all people know, let me not come out here and make any sort of false promises. I will once again state, primary tension is bred through unmet expectations. Layman terms, without the big words, problems start because people set a bar that they don't reach. Mm. Mike McCarthy, you set the bar. Mm. The Cowboys are going to win this game. So now if I'm a Cowboys fan... I already thought I was going to win this game. First and foremost, I don't really watch every other team as closely as I watch the Cowboys. So Love I see Washington 6-6. Six and six. I see we're 8-4. and four. I realize they're Washington. I already think highly of myself as Dallas. So I'm already thinking I'm going to win this game. Now, my head coach, my fearless leader, comes out and says, of course we're going to win this game. Cowboys fans, Cowboys players, Jerry Jones, they are all now convinced Oh, it's an easy guaranteed W because Mike McCarthy has confirmed what everybody already believed, mm. whether rationally or irrationally, whether merited or unmerited. So, yeah, I hate Big Mouth McCarthy saying this. <laughs> Why are you calling him big? Because it was unnecessary. Aww. I hate Big Mouth McCarthy saying this. Why are you calling him big? Because he can't back it up. I hate Big Mouth oh. McCarthy saying this. Why are you because Washington is trending upwards while Dallas is sputtering. Oh. And McCarthy, you just made a bed that you might now have oh. to lay in. And oh. it will not be comfortable. Oh, man. <laughs> they just got in my ear and just reminded me that uh, Super Bowl champion coach Big Mike McCarthy made this declaration. Big mouth. Not big, big mouth? Yes. Oh. oh no. Big Pro is describing the mouth, I don't not know. the person. I don't know. Oh. You probably got a big ring, too, for that championship. <laughs> he wrote that check. Uh, they had to go cash it, but he got his ring, too. I, I don't know. Um, you know I don't have an issue with this because I'm not fear-based. I'm not like you. I ain't scared of jack. I already know in this world, I was born, I'm going to die. Everything in the middle is going to be a tie. Like, I'm going to win some, I'm going to lose some. But if you add it all up, I'm a, it's a tie. I can't take it with me. So I enjoy every moment, and I ain't scared of nothing. Dog, I wasn't always this way. I used to be on your side, Acho. Oh, I used to hate that world when I used to live over there. Concerned with others and how their reception is and what they're going to take from everything I say and do. And Mike McCarthy, because he's a Super Bowl champion coach, just like... I don't know. Jimmy Johnson. Remember when Jimmy Johnson said the same exact thing? 1993 NFC Championship game going against not the Washington football team that just won four in a row, but the vaunted, the next level San Francisco 49ers. And what did Jimmy Johnson go on there in the radio station to say? Look, man, put it in three-inch headlines. We're going to win this game. You're going to tell little, big Jimmy Johnson <laughs> not to say it? Or, oh, it's because of Mike McCarthy and your relationship with Mike McCarthy. Let's talk about this relationship, because I got to get into your relationships to kind of change you and convert you to bring you on to this side. This is the better side. Um, Mike McCarthy writes checks, but he knows he has to cash them as well. He is invested in everything that he writes for this team to go out there and perform. It's the same dynamic as being a parent with kids. Every day, I'm invested in them. Every day, reading books, making decisions, feeding them, bathing them, helping them get dressed, all this stuff. I'm doing all this with them, right? But ultimately, their life is theirs. Ultimately, the checks that I write, they got to cash. All that I'm putting into them, they got to go out there and do it. And that's the thing about a team concept that you got to understand. There's some guys on this team that won't even step on the field. 
but are major contributors in terms of practice. You know this, practice tempo, doing the stuff, the little things in the locker room, keeping us all together, whatever it may be. Glue players, as we're going to discuss later. Point being, why are you mad at Mike McCarthy for believing in what he already believes in? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call you out. Mm. Because it's more times than not, Acho comes on this show before the cameras are on, before the lights are on. Oh, Sale, this is going to be a good one today. <laughs> before a certain block, oh, Sale, I'm fired up on this one. And every time you say that, what do I always say to you? And? <laughs> like, you're going to do your best, and you're going to live with the results. Why are you mad at Mike McCarthy? <laughs> Who's telling everybody, oh, we're going to do this this week? And if he does it, he does it. If he doesn't, he lives with the results. So the, 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 the mm -hmm. biggest point of what you just said was, I say this before the cameras come on. Yeah. I say this before the lights oh, come on. Oh, you scared. I forgot. I'm not scared. Oh, you scared. I'm cognitive of the outcome of my words. What you mean? I say this. I don't tell y'all, oh, this is going to be the best show ever. Because if they start watching and realize, oh, this is not the best show ever, oh. then my words were not only irrelevant, my words were a lie. It's one thing if Mike McCarthy says during a team meeting, fellas, we're going to win this game now. Mm -hmm. We got to win this game. I would hope. He does that oh. as a head coach. But when you come out there and take a stand publicly saying, we're going to win this game, a declarative stance, now the whole world has to hold you accountable to something you never even need to say. And why not? We want the ball, and we're going to score, close quote. Oh, you leave that dude alone. That's my Who dog. Was that? Who was Matt that? Hasselbeck, Matt Hasselbeck. 2003, NFC wild card yeah. game <laughs> against the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, yeah. We want the ball, and we're going to score yeah, yeah. in overtime. Yeah. First drive. Pick six. Somebody was going to score. Yeah. <laughs> it was my damn <laughs> Somebody's going to uh, win. It might not be Mike McCarthy and these Cowboys, you, but still, 18 years later, we want the ball. We're going to score. A quote I still know on this show. Would I be regurgitating it if the Seahawks had gone and scored? Not at all. Would I be mentioning it if the Seahawks mm, had not said not? that and still gone and scored? Why not? No. But at the point in which you put yourself out there, mm. You now create a predicament. Sal, you always say this. One of my favorite quotes of yours. Not oh. my favorite, but one of my favorite. My dog. You can't call for attention. Oh. And then hang up. And then hang up. Yes, At sir. the point in which you say, we are going to win this game. Of course we're going to win this game. That is calling for attention. You just had to say, we're going to go out there and play our best. Oh. But at the point in which you say, we're going to win this game, that's calling for attention. Mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy, you don't need to call for no more attention. You missed last week's game because of COVID. Attention. You're coaching for the Cowboys. Attention, mm -hmm. your owner slash general manager came out there and blamed your wide receivers for Dak Prescott's issues. Mm -hmm. Attention, you don't need to call for attention because at the end of the game, you will not be able to hang up. Man, who said he gonna hang up? Maybe the phone get disconnected. I don't know, but in this situation, damn, you're so scared. You're so scared of other people's reception and perception and then their judgment. Give a damn about what them people think. People ain't gonna help you climb the mountain. How the hell they gonna pull you down once you're at the top? I'm not like that. I regurgitated what Jimmy Johnson said. They won. <laughs> Don't give me all the failure issues. Give me the successful ones as well. And this is the difference. And this is why I like this. Because Mike McCarthy is basically saying, look, I have such belief in something that I intend to do that I will tell you my intentions. What's wrong with telling someone your intentions? I'm not fighting for the arrogance of this or whatever may come from that point of view. I'm fighting for the ability, the freedom, the liberty to say exactly what you intend to do, even if it doesn't come to fruition. Growing up, everyone was asking me, are you going to go to the NFL? I didn't even say I was going to the NFL. What I said is I'm going to be successful. That was my only goal. I didn't give a damn how it came. If I was going to be a computer programmer, teacher, NFL, look, I just got to get from here to there. That was my goal. Everybody else kept seeing me and my talents and was like, you going to play football? You going to go to the NFL? I'm just trying to make it, dog. Point being... I said I was going to make it. What if I didn't make it, Acho? It doesn't always have to go that way. All of a sudden, you should have never said you were going to make it because look at you now. You didn't make it. I do know people like that. I don't judge them. But also, the reality is they didn't make it. Shouldn't stop them from dreaming. Shouldn't stop them from intention. Shouldn't stop Mike McCarthy in this moment. He has a very capable team that is actually better on offense, better on defense, and has a better quarterback. Why wouldn't he state the obvious and say we're okay. going to win? Here's a disconnect. Here's a disconnect. Here's a disconnect. Let me clarify. Oh, you had to say it three times. I have Damn. no <laughs> issue with someone dreaming, but you don't always need to publicize your dream. Why not? Because what do you gain? I said this before, so I believe last week. Let's go. All things permissible, not all things profitable. profitable. 
So you can do whatever you want. Mike McCarthy, go ahead. Do it. Oh. But what do you gain by doing it? That is the issue I have at hand. What do you gain, Mike McCarthy, by saying, of course, we're going to win this game? Oh, I could because now, Sal, at the end of the game, assuming the Cowboys lose, if the Cowboys lose, if they so happen to lose, now everybody got questions. Well, you know, Mike McCarthy, you said that y'all were going to win this game. What led you to believe that? Well, Mike McCarthy, all this unnecessary nonsense. Mm. Just go out and play. We haven't even talked about the aspect that we don't need to give them no bulletin board material. The other team gets paid, too. <laughs> other team bulletin got checks, too. Material. Other team is already upset. You don't need to give the other Let's team talk. any additional reason what? to go out there and want to be any greater than they already are going to try to be. I get Washington that. already has a ton of stake. Yeah. Why do you need to now add to the fact that, oh, yeah, they said they're going to win this game? Mm. They're going to come to our house mm. and beat us and win? Why even add to that? Yeah. You already have enough forces acting against you, Dallas Cowboys. No reason to add an additional force. There's a small difference between you and your homeboys Let's go. talking about your dreams growing up. Nobody can hold y'all accountable to that except the people that heard that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Except whoever was in that small circle. Mm -hmm. The whole world now has heard this conversation. Ooh. The whole world is in the circle of Mike Ooh. McCarthy. And we can all hold Mike McCarthy accountable to mm. those words. Oh. So you saying don't say this because you're going to have to deal with questions in case of failure. The Cowboys deal with questions in success. <laughs> they beat the New Orleans Saints and everybody talking about, I don't know about that performance right there. Uh, it didn't look so great. We came on here and argued how good they looked, even though they won. The Cowboys know bullseye on our chest no matter what, no matter what we do. So I don't think that's on the table if you're a Dallas Cowboy. But I know what's at play. I know, dis let me do it like you did, disconnect. Disconnect, disconnect. You talk to me like you're my granddaddy up here. You look sharp, too. All right, let's talk about the disconnect. Because if I'm the one with a gun, I'm not scared. Now, I know why you're scared, because you're scared when the rabbit has the gun. Mm -hmm. I know why you're scared, because you're scared if the other team all of a sudden is fully motivated. And let's talk about preparation, because not every team is fully prepared. There's some guy on that team that's starting right now is like, oh, man, it's Washington. It's some guy on that team that's all in. And we know the ways because we've been in the locker room. And you can tell yourself that you're fully prepared, but if someone could tell you something about you and say, we're going to beat y'all, and then all of a sudden you prepare more, you weren't fully prepared before. That's what's at play right here, bulletin board material, which I think is BS. Every opponent I ever face, my mind is they're giving me their best. Whether they're doing it or not is not my conversation. I'm assuming you're giving me your best. I give a damn if I tell you you sorry. We're going to kill y'all. And you're going to go from, what, 100 to 101 percent? There's no such thing. So I'm already going against a fully motivated Washington football team. What does it matter before the kickoff, during halftime, or after the game, they get the read, oh, that team thought they were going to beat us. Just the fact that you arrive at the stadium tells them loud enough they trying to beat us. So I, I just think that's misguided. And the reason okay. is there are so many times in sports history that we realize other people's words are a motivating factor. Maybe just because it's personal to me, Dallas Mavericks playing the Miami Heat okay. 2011 NBA Finals. Remember walking into the stadium, D. Wade, LeBron James, joking because Dirk Nowitzki had said he was sick. Dirk mm -hmm. Nowitzki had, had, mm -hmm. had had those issues. Dirk ended up going off. Dirk mm -hmm. ended up giving them boys buckets, more buckets than he had given them prior, and the uh, Mavericks end up winning that series, a series which will haunt LeBron for the rest of his career. Now, maybe Dirk was going to do that anyway. Maybe us as TV personalities created say. in <clears throat> narrative form what yeah. was going to potentially happen because of what Le uh, LeBron and D-Wade went on to say. Jokes. But... The fact of the matter is, now you are allowing us to piece two things together. McCarthy, if y'all go out there and get blown up, now the narrative can be, man, you went in there too cocky, mm -hmm. went in there too confident, mm -hmm. went in there egotistical. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, and, and I'll kind of close my thought with this is... Let's go. Oftentimes, we pay no attention to the positives. We only pay attention to the negatives. You talk about this on social media. A thousand people could praise you, <laughs> and you only gonna read that one comment, Acho, you an idiot. Wiley, you a clown. Acho, you sound dumb. I was thinking about this two days ago when I did that show. When I did the show, you weren't here, big dog. And I was like, man, the show went incredibly smooth. I didn't think anything of it, because it went smooth. Mm. But had it gone bad, mm. your boy would have been red hot. Mm. So I had to pause and say, wait a second. The fact that it went smooth is a sign. Because it could, didn't have to go smooth. Nobody's going to pay attention to the Cowboys if they win. 
We're not even going to think about the fact that Mike McCarthy said, of course, we're going to win. Because when everything goes right, you pay no mind to it. Mm. When everybody's complimenting you, you pay no mind to it. When a show goes seamlessly, you pay no mind to it. Mm. But when things go wrong, mm. that's when everybody starts to look at why did it go wrong. Mm. If the Cowboys lose, Mike McCarthy, you just added an additional problem. He gains nothing and potentially loses a lot by those comments. That's my biggest issue with it. So in your mentality, in your mindset, you think the pain of losing is greater than the pleasure of winning. Sounds like that. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say that in gambling especially. I, I hate to lose so much that I ain't even going to try. I don't give a damn about losing. You know why? Because that's a process. That's a part of the process to winning. Like, me and my wife, we were talking about this yesterday. And my wife is scared to fall down and just in life in general. She's scared to fall down. She wants everything to be perfect. She's scared to fall down. I was like, but you can't learn to ride a bike if you don't fall down. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, if you want to ride your bike, you're going to scrape up your knees. If you want to learn how to do some ollies, if you want to learn how to pop a wheelie or two, you got to hit the ground, right? Who cares about hitting the ground? As I tell my kids all the time, don't worry about falling down. Learn how to get up. And that's as simple as this. If this team loses a game and, oh, my God, we can attach to it a narrative of words that you keep talking about the examples that didn't work, the exceptions that proved the rule. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Johnson did this for the, day, the same Dallas Cowboys decades ago. Let's talk about someone who, before every track event, did this. <laughs> right in front of everybody's face, looking at them, dancing, hitting the running man. <laughs> and he went out there and said, good luck. Basically, without words, he said, I'm better than y'all. I'm winning this race. And I don't have a problem with that because I think there is a separation of church and state. I think what you say is what you want. I think what you do is what you're trying to do. And that's as simple as that. If you don't get it done, next time. But the, the Washington football team knows that they're undermanned. They know that they're not as good as the team that they're facing. So I stand tall for those who believe that they can achieve. You can stand where you want to stand or squat where you want to squat for those who need to be careful of what they say until they do it. And then it's too late anyway, because if you really believed it, you should have said it in the first place.